AI-generated smart contracts just got a major upgrade. With the release of OpenZeppelin's Contracts MCP servers, you can now generate smart contracts that follow security best practices and use audited imported libraries, all with a single prompt. Hi, I'm Andrew, and I'm part of the product team at OpenZeppelin. Today, I'm going to walk you through the OpenZeppelin Contracts MCP servers. We'll talk about what they are, and then we'll do two side-by-side -side comparisons for code with and without the MCP server so that you can see the benefits of plugging this into your AI workflows. All right, let's start with some definitions. What are Open Zeppelin contracts? Open Zeppelin contracts are audited libraries that follow security best practices. They're trusted by beginner developers just experimenting, all the way through advanced professional developers working on live complex protocols. What are MCP servers? MCP, Model Context Protocol, is a way to increase the accuracy of AI-generated results by providing context. In our case here, that context are Open Zeppelin's contracts libraries. All right, I'm here on the MCP Open Zeppelin homepage. As you can see, there are four languages that we currently offer, Solidity, Cairo, Stellar, and Stylus. And within each of those languages are multiple tools, and these tools are different contract types. So, before we go into installing the MCP server, I'm gonna go ahead and run our prompts without the MCP server so we have something to compare to. For today, I'm going to use cursor, and I have two preset prompts. Our first one is a simple ERC20 fungible token. Our prompt says create a smart contract that creates fungible tokens that pre-mints a million tokens, is mintable, burnable, plausible, and has roles. Let's go ahead and accept that file. For our second comparison, we're gonna do something a little bit more complex and we're gonna do a smart account. So we say create a smart contract for a smart account that includes signature validation, allows us to hold 721 and 1155 tokens, has modules enabled, and uses an ECD SA signer. Excellent. And we'll accept that file. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and clear all these shots. And now let's go ahead and add our MCP server. So I'm going to go ahead and do Solidity. As you can see, you can pick your favorite um, AI tool. Um, and then you can go ahead and either copy and paste into the config file or do the one click add to cursor, which I'm going to do here. Great. That looks correct. Awesome, and those tools are enabled. So let's go ahead and run those same exact prompts and the only thing we're going to change is the name of the file. So here, I'm just gonna change this and we'll go ahead and run. Excellent, you can see it's calling the tool here, Solidity ERC20. So we have the language and the contract type. Let's go ahead and run. Excellent, go into accept and then run that second prompt for the smart account. And again, I'm only changing the name of the file. Here we go. Excellent, this time we're calling solidity account, which is correct. Perfect. So now that we have both files done, let's go ahead and do our side-by-side -side comparison. All right, so I have without the MCP on the left, with MCP on the right, you can tell they actually look fairly similar, but there's actually two main differences. Number one, the version of Open Zeppelin contracts being used. On the left, 
I can see we're using version four by having the before token transfer function. And on the right, we are using version five, which has the update function. So while version four would work, we always want the latest and greatest when we're uh, building our smart contracts. Difference number two is actually a security best practice. On the left, you can see that we're assigning message sender to all three roles, admin, pauser, and minter. And while this works, it's not recommended. On the right, you can see that we accept three arguments in the constructors for uh, the admin, pauser, and minter. And this allows us to assign those roles separately, which is a security best practice. So the two main differences we saw for this fungible token are with the MCP server, we got the latest and greatest contracts and we follow security best practices. Okay, let's dive into smart accounts. Again, we have without the MCP server on the left and with the MCP server on the right. Let's take a look. Okay, difference number three and the one that we see here is with the MCP server, we have more concise, readable code. We use multiple imported libraries, which are audited by Open Zeppelin, and allows us to easily understand what's happening here. While the code on the left may work, the issue is that every moment we spend auditing AI-generated code is a minute we're not spending building our product. So again, while it may work, this helps save time and increases trust that what you're getting is a solid starting point. Okay, so to summarize, there were three main differences that we achieved that made our outputs more accurate and more trustable by using the Open Zeppelin Contracts MCP servers. Number one, we were able to call the latest and greatest Open Zeppelin contracts, which we want to plug in to get the best uh, starting points for our smart contracts. Difference number two was a security best practice. If you remember, we were able to decide separate addresses in the constructor for all of the different roles. And difference number three was concise, readable, and trustable code to allow us to spend time building our product rather than looking over AI-generated results. I encourage you to go out and try these new Open Zeppelin Contracts MCP servers. Try some basic contracts, try some advanced contracts, try plugging into your AI workflow, and see how you can increase the accuracy of your smart contracts for your products. If you do go ahead and do this, please share it, tag us. We'd love to see what you come up with. Thanks. Mm -hmm.